I believe as we start the new season and of 2017 that the Lord has been impressed upon me in my prayer time that we just really need to get back to some basics of Amen. Christianity. And so I was looking at this passage as it was pressed upon my heart to, to share with you. And so I'm excited about it. The Bible said there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou dost, except God be with him. Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee that you must be born again. The wind blows where it lists, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it come or whether it goes. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Thou art a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that which we have seen, and receive not our witness. But I have told you earthly things, and you believe not. How shall you believe if I tell you of the heavenly things? No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that come down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And Moses, and as Moses be lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whomsoever would believe it on him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for John chapter 3. We thank you, Lord God, for your conversation with Nicodemus. We thank you, Lord God, for your saving work. We thank you, Lord God, for your death on the cross. We thank you, Lord God, that you came in sinless perfection. And we thank you, Lord God, that the cross could not hold you. We thank you, Lord God, on the third day that you rose. And we thank you, Lord God, that we will see you one time, one day, I should say. And Lord God, I praise you and thank you that death will not be able to hold us back if we know you as Lord and Savior, but we too will have our bodies risen with you. And we just praise you, Lord God, for this time that we can come together. I pray, Lord God, a blessing for every man and their family that's represented here today. I pray, Lord God, you work mightily in all the hearts that you would have your way in this service today. May you be honored and glorified. May I hide behind the cross of Calvary that everything I say be of you, not of me. And we just thank you, Lord God, for the walk your rescue mission. Bless every worker here, Lord. Give them fresh wind in their sails today, I pray in your holy name. And every man said, Amen. Amen. The number that comes to me is 613. 613. You say, what is the number 613? What does that represent? It represents the number of the laws that Nicodemus memorized. As a master teacher and a master of the Sanhedrin and one that was one of the great religious figures of that day, a teacher of the law, he had to memorize 613 laws and keep them. Now that's pretty hard to do, I would say, by any stretch of the imagination. He noticed the things that Jesus was doing as the miracles that he was performing and healing people. 
And rather than having the religious people argue and complain about how Jesus was doing the miracles, he quietly stepped back into the crowd and just observed. And you know, that's, that's, a, that's a virtue. You don't have to open your mouth right away, but just take in what's going on, kind of process it before you say something. But he noticed there was something about this Jesus. He just noticed that there was something special about him. He didn't look at Jesus in the same light as the other religious rulers did, but he looked at him as if, you know what? I believe this is the Messiah that we've been reading about in the Old Testament. I believe this is the fulfillment of prophecy as Jesus Christ came into the world. I believe that he is the Son of God. And he rightly said so in his conversation with Jesus. He notices that there was something special about the Lord. And, and because of his stature, he couldn't meet with Jesus during the day for fear of retaliation from the other religious rulers. But he came to him at night. And of course, Jesus met with him. Now, one thing I want to say about Nicodemus right away just because it's important for me to say. <laughs> Jesus knows the difference between a man who is sincere and humble wanting to know the answer to something versus somebody that has false humility, wants to check him at the door, wants to check him at every time he can and tries to throw him under the bus every time they could. Jesus knew the difference. And so Jesus knew that this man was coming to him humbly and he really had a desire to know who he was. He really had a desire. And, and so Nicodemus is coming to him as this religious ruler, as a man who's keeping 613 laws. And Jesus says it's not about the laws. It's not about them at all. It's, not, it's about me. It's about me. The fulfillment of the law. It's about me, the, the one who's come into the world to fulfill what you cannot fulfill. You cannot keep perfection within you. It's impossible. Nobody can. None of us are made that way. We're all born sinners. And the wages of sin is death. We have no righteousness within us. But when Christ comes to live within us, when we receive him, as Lord and Savior, we receive his righteousness and therefore we are made righteous. The word justification comes in as, as if we've never sinned because the covering of Christ comes upon us when we, re we accept him as Lord and Savior. And we could be with the Father. We could communicate with the Father because our sins are no longer counted against us. We are no longer in opposition and anger with the Father, but now we have been made peace through the blood of Christ. And, and Jesus comes to him and he knows who he is. He knows who Nicodemus is. He knows that Nicodemus is a ruler. He knows he's teaching the law. And he says to him, he says, you have to be born again. He says in John 3, 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus is trying to think in the logical sense, what are you talking about? You have to be born again. I can't go back into my mother's womb again. I'm an old man. But Jesus was talking about a spiritual rebirth. He was talking about the fact that you're born into the flesh, born of water, when you come into this world in the first birth. But when you receive the spiritual birth of Jesus Christ, that's being born again. You're no longer born of the water that came first, but now you're born of the spirit, which comes second. And you come to know him as Lord and Savior of your life. The 613 laws were meant to be broken. They were meant to show you and I that we can't keep them. The law was meant that the Ten Commandments were made to show us we can't keep them. We don't have the capacity, we don't have the ability 
We're not made to do that. And the Bible rightly describes that Jesus loved you and he loved me that he came to this world to die. And that famous John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that so whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. His reason for coming was love. He was the fulfillment uh, of the law. And, and when you put your trust and you believe in Jesus, he'll take care of the rest. I don't have to work at fulfilling the law. But now that I am born again, now that Jesus has come into my life, the law has been written upon my heart, the Bible says. And I, 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 I want to keep the laws. I, I want to keep what God says. I, I want to keep the Ten Commandments. And not because I have to, not because it's something that I, I have to do, but I want to do it because I love him. I, I want to do it because I realize what he did for me on the cross. I, I realize he paid a price I couldn't pay. And I realize he did something I just could not do. And I'm humble enough to be able to say that. I'm, I'm just humble enough to know that I can't fulfill what Jesus did, and I never could. But Jesus talks to Nicodemus, and he says, you're a teacher, and you don't know these things? And Nicodemus is humbly saying, no, I don't know that. I, I just thought that I kept the 613 laws, and... I'm good to go. I, I, I got heaven because I kept them. Uh, he didn't know that there was another way of doing things. But he left that night, gentlemen, pondering on the things of God. He realized that Jesus was more than just an ordinary man, but he was God. And he received him into his life as his Lord and Savior. And in John chapter 7, as the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, are coming together to try to figure out some way to kill Jesus, Nicodemus pipes up and he says to them in verse 50, Nicodemus said unto them, He that came to Jesus by night being of them, does not our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he does? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of the Galilee? Search and look for, out of the Galilee arises no prophet. And every man went his own home. The Bible records really plainly and very clearly that the three places that Nicodemus has talked about in the Word of God is the same, one of the same Nicodemus ben Garan. He was one of the three richest men in all of Jerusalem, one of the three richest people. His brother wrote a, his brother wrote a book called The Wars of Antiquities. And so it was that Nicodemus became to know Christ and he argued on point for Christ to say how could you condemn a man without a court hearing? How could you condemn a man without hearing his accusation, without the accusation? What has he done that you want to kill him? And he pipes up for Jesus and sticks up for him. But finally in the end, in the 19th chapter of the book of John, we read that after Jesus is hung on the cross, he has died. We realize that after that, that there was another point where the same Nicodemus was talked about. It says here in verse chapter 19 to verse 38, this is after this Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he would take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of mirth and aloes, about a hundred pounds of weight. 
That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to spend on mirth, which was priceless at, at those days. But Nicodemus, being a believer of Jesus, spared no expense to see that Jesus was buried in the proper way. You see, he went from looking for Jesus at night, being curious to who he was, being a man who thought he could keep the law. He went from that to being a disciple of God and trusting in Jesus Christ for his salvation, believing in Jesus that he was the Son of God, believing that he died for our sins on the cross. And afterwards, as he had died on the cross and he was taken off the cross and need to be buried, Nicodemus was not afraid at this point to see the whole world look at him and say, you know what, that man's one of those Jesus people. He wasn't afraid to let the world know that now I love him. Now I am willing to die for him. And now I'm willing to spare no expense to see Jesus being buried in the proper way. At first it was by night, so nobody would see. Second of all, in, for, in chapter 7, I'll stick up for him, but I'm kind of straddling the fence. But when you come to chapter 19 of the book of John, Nicodemus, Nicodemus clearly puts himself out there so that the whole world will see that he was a disciple of God. Amen. And you see, Nicodemus is a point, a reference for you and I. Because so many of us are born into a denomination of sorts where we feel that we got to keep the law. If we just keep the Ten Commandments, if we just feel that to keep the traditions of men, we'll be all right. We'll, we'll make it to heaven. And if we just do good and try to do our best, we're just going to get there. If we just do what we know is right to do, we'll make it to heaven and everything will be okay. But Jesus comes to this man, and the, this man comes to Jesus in the middle of the night, and Jesus clearly, clearly tells him that it's not good enough to follow the law. It's not good enough to have them in your heart. It's not good enough to have them memorized. But you must be born again. You must have a new birth within you to be able to make it to heaven. Amen. And so the Lord plainly puts it out there that a man must be born again. There must be a change in your heart. There must be a change where the Holy Spirit comes to live within you and renews what's inside of you. It makes you a new creature in Christ Jesus. Behold, that all things be, the old has gone away. Behold, all things become new. God makes them all new. He makes you a new creature in Christ Jesus when the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. You're no longer that same person that you once were. You work through whatever issues you have. But I tell you this, and I promise you this, that the Holy Spirit that comes to live within you is more than adequate to be able to change what needs to be changed within you. He's more than strong, and He's more than faithful to do whatever you need to do in your life. Whatever situation you're in, whatever it is that you battle with gentlemen day in and day out, I am telling you, the Holy Spirit of God who lives within you knows how exactly how to fix it. And he knows exactly how to change it. Jesus said in John chapter 3, The wind blows where it blows. You can't see it. And so is the Holy Spirit of God. You can't see him, but you see him at work. You see him convicting a religious ruler by the name of Nicodemus. And convicting him that the laws that he was trying to keep, 613 laws, were inadequate to save him. It's wonderful to know them. It's wonderful to, to try to follow them as best you can. But don't look for them to save you because they can't. It's only through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the law is a schoolmaster teaching us that we cannot keep. But they're fulfilled within Jesus. They're fulfilled in our Lord and Savior as he went to the cross. And gentlemen, when you put your trust in Jesus, and you allow him to rule and reign in your life, and you allow him to be able to do what only he can do within you, 
your life is going to change. Things are going to happen that will never happen. He can move in your life and do things you can't imagine. And so it was with this religious ruler who thought that, you know what, I know the laws, I've been teaching these things, I, I've been teaching the synagogues, and the day before Jesus turned the tables in the synagogue, and he noticed that, it, and now he comes to Jesus at night, and he says, boy, this, this is the same, same guy that flipped the tables over, you know, what, what am I getting myself into by talking to this guy? But, but Jesus said, but Jesus said, my house should be a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. And evidently, Nicodemus thought the same thing. He, saw, he felt the same thing. Hey, he knew people were getting ripped off when they came. And he said, well, that's enough. But I don't know what I'm going to do. But then Jesus came along and he took care of the whole thing, as we know. But I'm ending with this, gentlemen. That you see a progression in a man's life. It didn't matter how much money Nicodemus had. He was rich. But the point was this, that he put his trust in Jesus and I wonder how many people in this place today have put their faith and trust in Jesus and how many people that are in this place today that think somehow that if I'm 51 percent good if I'm 49 percent bad I'm in the problem that I argue when people say that is this how do you know that you're the 51 percent good and you're not the 49 percent good 51 percent bad if you're your own judge, if you're the you're your own judge, you you've got a terrible you've got a terrible attorney. Because only the righteous God, only the Father will judge. And when he judges, he'll judge based on the fact, do you know Jesus or you don't? Either you're born again or born from above or you're not. There's no other way. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, with all eyes closed and heads bowed, I just ask you, these people, just one question, Lord. Do they know you? If they were to die today and stand before you, Lord God, what would their answer be? Is there any man here today, as your eyes are closed and head bowed, you want to raise hands and say, today, I want to know Jesus. I want to know him as my Lord and Savior. Would anybody want to raise a hand today and say, today, amen, I see your hands. Amen, I see your hands. Today, I want to know Jesus. Amen. Let me quick pray for you. And uh, I'll lead you through a sinner's prayer. Then afterwards, see Daniel, see Bruce, see, see Seth, uh, see Brother Carl, uh, and Brother Terry. Just tell me you made a decision for Christ today. You want to know more about this Jesus. So here's the prayer, nothing magic, but the Bible says if you meet it from the depth of your heart, you're saved. Heavenly Father, knowing that I'm a sinner and you died for sinners, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Take my sins and cast them as far as east as west, never to return no more. Holy Spirit of God, Come to live within me and change me from the inside out. And I praise you and thank you for saving my soul today.